A couple weeks ago, Minecraft Redstoner and YouTuber Rexstone created a Minecraft version of the Google Chrome No Internet game. A few days later, after I recreated this game on Bedrock, I sent my version of the game to the Bowtie Man to see if he would showcase it in one of his Showcasing Your Contraptions videos. And to my surprise, he did. In the video, he couldn't hide the fact that he was a little bit impressed. You have been exposed. But one thing he asked for got the wheels turning for a new project. He asked me if I could add a counter. Now, I could simply add a seven segment display to it and be done, but I wanted to do a lot more. A lot more than that. So I got to work. I wanted to create a massive version of the dino game with a slightly, I said slightly, more realistic dino and some more realistic obstacles. I also had to add a display for, you know, the digits, which you can kind of see up there, and a death message, which is a little bit more obvious because the last one wasn't really obvious at all. And with all the systems I had in my head, I got to work. I started placing blocks and the entire project took about two weeks and it was very fun to work on. So now I present the Finch project, the Google Chrome no internet dino game, but better. Congratulations, you made it through that weird voiceover thing. Well, it's time to explain the unexplainable, this fun game right here. So I'm not gonna read those signs out. If you wanna see them, either pause the video like a smart person or join my Discord and download this world. I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna be promoting my Discord too much in this video, but yeah, make sure if you do wanna see this whole thing in its glory, then download rather join my Discord. You don't have to download anything until you go to the Discord. The download link will be in World Downloads, which is going to be a new channel I'm going to create, but let's begin the game. So as you saw, I just went under the tripwire and things started to happen. And I'm just going to let the game play out by itself for a little bit. That's our dino right there walking like a cool boy. And that's a cactus is about to hit us. Oh my gosh. And then what's going to happen? We're going to get a dead, 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 a dead right there. And then it's going to shut off the game. So as you can see, the floor is turning off. Oh no, what's going to happen to us? We're going to poof out of existence. And then the set, the thing's going to reset, but it's not going to fully reset because bedrock dumb. But there we go. That's going to reset. We can just manually reset that with that button. And that's the entire game right there. Oh, yeah, I, I forgot about one crucial part. The jumping. Right, forgot about that. Um, let's, let's see the animation. So that's our little warning indicator right there. Um, yeah, the dino kind of fades out of existence. It's, oh, well, yeah. Uh, not the best jumping animation. We also died because we jumped into a cloud or we were too late. One or the other. I wasn't really paying attention too much, so I couldn't tell you. And then we're obviously going to get two more points because, oh my gosh, because bedrock bad. Because bedrock bad. We can just reset it with that button and then everything's going to turn off. So let's start to explain how things work. So we'll start with the jumping animation. Or rather, we'll start with the actual dino. And I realized I was not talking, speaking up at all. I was being the most quiet individual on this planet. So I'm going to try and do better for the rest of this video. Let's go. So what this over here is, is a dinosaur. Believe it or not, this weird mess of white concrete and white wool is a dinosaur. So the way it works is that when this is not extended, so let me just break that redstone dust real quick. She can put a block there for the future, but I'll just break that for a second. And when this is extended, so just going to replace this observer quickly, this whole thing starts to go mad. So let's watch it. This is a coolio dinosaur. So we have walking feet. It's running. It's not moving anywhere, but it's running. And this tail is going up and down. It's disappearing for a split second, but it is. It exists. And then this is this is our dinosaur right here. The way we have this is through the display, which I'll explain separately because it's a whole, it's a whole separate entity. But right here we have a separate line of um, redstone lamps just for the tail. So this right here is just the tail switching up and down. That is all controlled by this Coolio clock right here. So this redstone block is just going to go from the bottom to the top, activating this piston with a torch on the side, blah, blah, blah. You know the drill. This is pretty much just a clock for the tail itself. So it's going up and down. And then around the back here, we have pretty much the clock for the running. So this is pretty much the dinosaur running. This is just going back and forth. And every time it goes forward, this comparator is being one tick. So that's just going to go through. It's going to have a slight, it's going to slightly look like it's running. So it's kind of a bad animation. Wait, what if I slow down the clock? I'll save you the anticipation. It did not work. And the way we get it to jump is by activating this um, rising edge mono stable circuit right there. And if I was to grab a redstone block, which I have in my inventory now, I can just power this. So that powers. Then that's going to stop this one, go up there, 
go up one more, go back down, and then go back to this one, and then the clock resumes, so, oh no, that's not good, <laughs> we're not gonna do that. Um, that pretty much just goes all the way up, goes down, and then goes back down, and if I was to just grab this, yeah, it's a C tick, so that won't do anything. If I was to once again do it, I'm just gonna go to the front, it just goes up one, and then goes up another one, then goes back down, then goes down to the final one. And the final one could be slowed down a little bit more, but to be honest, it took me way too long to get the animation this good. And it's not even good as is, it's pretty bad right now. But that already took me too long, so I'm not even going to try and edit it in any way, shape, or form before I spend another three hours trying to make a bad dino jump. So, that's how we get the dino to jump. Let's look at the obstacles now. This over here is just a game start circuit, so you don't immediately restart the game when you die, because that kind of defeats the purpose of there being a dead because then once, as soon as you die, you kind of restart the game, and eh, not the best system. So right here I have a little pulse extender, just to make sure you don't restart the game as soon as you die. So that's that whole thing there. I could probably add a repeater, just to make it a little bit more, um, I guess, long as a pulse extender. So there we go. That works better now. These are the obstacles right here. So this is just the clock that controls them. So I'm just going to actually turn off the dinosaur like I was supposed to. And turn on the clock. So right here, I'm just going to activate this right here. And yes, there's going to be some lag in this video. I'm going to explain why it's so laggy. But as you can see here, we have a huge comparator clock right here. This is pretty much just a subtract mode clock. And these are the individual obstacles. So that one is the cactus. The way it works is that this piston extends into this burnout. Activating this piston, which powers this observer. This observer, when retracted, so when in this position, will power this piston right here. And at the same time... This is all being activated as a warning indicator, so if I was to power this, this is all just going to be randomly pulsed as a warning indicator, then right after the cactus is going to appear out of nowhere. Very logical. And then the cactus is just shaped by this thing right here, so just a bunch of repeaters on different delay. It's actually pretty satisfying to watch as well, so we're going to try and get it again. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that so satisfying? And then the observers just act as two tick repeaters right there going into these blocks. So that's how the whole weird thing works. And that's just how we get the cactus look. And the way we get that extra piece going at the beginning of the cactus is just by having a one tick repeater here rather than two. Because if it was one, if it was two tick, then it would just be flat at the front. So I'm just gonna activate it like that. And you can see that it's flat at the front. So we don't want that. That's not the best looking thing in the world. So we're just gonna make that one tick. And for us to activate it again, we see that it's not flat at the front and looks a little bit more realistic and looks a little bit more like a cactus. So there we go, that's that part done. The same thing is pretty much for the clouds, which are, were meant to be pterodactyls, but they ended up just becoming clouds because they look so bad. But right here, we pretty much just have the way we get the middle cloud. So if I was just to activate this redstone dust, which is controlled by a randomi randomizer right there. So this is just gonna fly through the screen. There we go. It's gonna disappear into nothing. Very logical once again. And this, I can just show it again, is just another thing with the repeater timings being different. As you can see, it's actually pretty satisfying to watch, so we're going to watch it again. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that so cool? Those extend first, or rather they extend later, and they retract first, which was actually pretty cool to get happening. And that's pretty much that whole entire system up there. It's pretty much just a mirror up here. This is the exact same timings as down here, just obviously, once again, at a higher position at the third position that the dino would usually jump in, so that goes all the way down there. As you can see, the score is going up. We'll get to that later, but that's the entire obstacle thing. As I said before, we have a randomizer to control this, so as you can see, we have two stackable items, so if we get a stackable item in there, it's only going to activate a signal strength of one, so only this signal right here will be activated, so it won't actually act power this piston in any way, shape, or form, but if we get the lava bucket in there, it will power two redstone dust, which is going to power this piston, which is going to activate the whole thing we just went over. Anyway, once again, following the orange circuit, we have these lines right here. These are just number one powering the seven segment display, which we somehow broke. I think it's because I spammed, so that's my fault. I'm sorry. But these pretty much just power the seven segment display. And then that's just going to go into this. Wait, no, this isn't. Yeah, this is just powering the seven segment display which is just going to go into the bell, which tiles the number over, blah, blah, blah. We'll go over that later. But this is just this number one using that for the seven signal display and number two using it for this area right here. So this is collision detection. So if there is 
the dinosaur in this position, so if he's at the top and this goes, extends and retracts, then it's going to depower, or rather power this line, which activates a lot of things. So number one, it resets the seven segment display, which we will get to later, we're not there yet, but it's then also going to activate the death message, and as well as that, going to reset everything, but it won't actually reset the clock, because we have uh, we have a redstone block powering it, so it can't really reset it. And that's pretty much what this huge line does. It's just a really cool collision detection. It's actually super simple too. It's just pretty hard to get timed. And at the bottom, I added a lot of extra redstone ticks just because of the massive input delay for it. But at the top, there's already a lot of input delay, so we don't really need to add any more. So that's how this entire weird thing works. And then the display, we won't talk about it for too long. It's just repeater, not repeater, comparator lines going all the way down and then individually activating these cells. So if I was to power this right here, we have one comparator line right there, and that's just gonna go all the way down. If we were to go to the front, we'd see there's a line, and that's how we do that. The reason why this display is so laggy is because these are pistons facing into blocks that are immovable, or rather the pistons are powered and they cannot extend, meaning that they are not actually, um, what's the word? They're, they're causing lag. That's that's exactly the definition. They're just causing a lot of lag. And that is pretty much not, that's a no good. That is a bad, bad. Obviously we're using soft inversion here. We didn't have to use soft inversion, but just because I want it all to be sync, yeah, I ended up using soft inversion in the long run and also makes the display slightly smaller for sync. But yeah, this is pretty much just the most ridiculous way in the universe to make a display, but it works. So that's all I care about right now. Let's go on to some more interesting stuff. So let's do the seven segment display. This is gonna be a fun one. Yay! So what we do is we activate this slot. Did I just hear a voice? I'm going mad. So this right here is just a bell. A bell activates on the rising edge only as I went over in my redstone video, the last redstone video about rating redstone components. So if I was just to grab um a thing here, let's see. Let's just do a thing. Let's go. There we go. So if we power this line, as you can see, it's going to power that piston, but when we depower it, it's actually not going to activate the piston because these only give a rising edge output, which means we can use them to only activate our um, signal strength counter here for a seven segment display once. So as you can see, this is just going to go through them. So this is a red coder. So it pretty much just takes individual signal strength outputs from a longer signal strength. So let's say you have five signal strength here, you're gonna have the fifth torch right here be on. So if I was to activate this five times, you'll see that the fifth torch is now on. It's obviously gonna change at some point soon because the game's still going. But as you can see, the fifth torch is now on, which means that this is all a good good. And yeah, as you can see now, the sixth one will be on. So one, two, three, four, five, six, because it just went on again. And once it's at 10, or rather this is at zero, so it goes, six seven eight nine zero this then goes over here over here blah 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 then goes down here and now this is going to be up another number so it'll be 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 and then zero zero so this is gonna be zero and then when that's a zero as well then it puts this over to one here so then it's gonna be 100 200 300 400 so on and so forth. I don't have another number because nobody's gonna get that high. Trust me, believe me, nobody. And right here, this is pretty much just how we get each output out. So this is just a full line of furnaces with one item in them. And then when they're up here, they're pretty much just activating certain lines. And then it just goes each to the side. And when there's nothing here, then it just gives zero. So nothing's being powered right here. But when there's a furnace right here with one item in there, it goes through and then it gives a signal strength of one so rather 15 but it just outputs a one so then we have our display on and if i was to go to the front you can see that we have 33 here that's pretty cool but let's say we wanted to get 100 all we have to do is ring this bell which is activated when this goes up to 10 so when this goes up to zero then this goes up another number so now this is at 100 30 something, 135, there we go. And to reset the display, it's actually super simple. All you have to do is reset the signal strength counter, which I will explain slightly. This is a circuit designed by Deco the Red Stoner. Make sure to check out his channel, or rather his video. He doesn't really upload anymore, which is a sad, sad, but I do have his video in the description, so you can go check that out. And this is pretty much just a signal strength counter. So there's only ever 15 signal strength through this rotation, which means that right now, let's see what number are we at. We're at number eight. So this signal strength right here is at number eight, 
And this is at, so let's see, let's do some quick math, seven. So this is now signal strength of six right now. This is at nine. As you can see, we have the ninth torchon. So this is a signal strength of nine. The way it works is that these are just full droppers and then they just give out an item. And yeah, they're pretty self-explanatory. Once you, you see them, you know what's happening, but it's hard to explain. The way the collision detection works is once again, we have these falling edge mana stables going into this long line of redstone dust and repeaters just to keep the signal strength going up strong. Then it goes all the way down here and activates this rising edge mana stable, which activates this death message saying dead. It's hard to see because it can't really be in two places at once. That just activates the death message and also is my display thing broken? No, it's not. Don't know why, I'm still at number one, just having bad luck, I guess. But then this goes through, this goes down here to the signal strength buster, so this goes all the way down, just using walls, changing shape to take a signal, observer output out, and this pretty much just activates this, so in the gameplay, normally this would just be out, and our dino would just be over there. And then when we die, this piston right here attracts, which turns the dino off, so the dino's right there, and it's going to just be turned off in one second. There you go. And that's pretty much how that part works, which is cool. And also, on the turning on of the circuit, this just powers this, so that all happens. And for the death, this retracts, which I think is a pretty cool circuit right there. That just goes all the way there. I didn't actually go over this part yet, which I'll do briefly. So this is just the input. So this goes straight through. Torch, for some reason. Don't even know why I had to use a torch, but I did. This goes through. More torch again. Then repeater and then block right here. This activates the jump thing we went over before, but if the game is not on, this will not do anything because obviously it's not going into solid block to power that piston, which is exactly what we want. So this, pretty much all the system is going into this game, which is actually pretty fun to play. So once again, just download the Discord link. And actually, since I feel nice, for those of you who don't want to go to my Discord, just say I don't like Discord in the comments and I'll just give you the link. So this was the Google Chrome Dinosaur game, but better. Hope you enjoyed. Have a lovely day. And good. Gonna try the high voice. Bye!